what the heck, you know? Uh, what do they say? Laughter is our best medicine. And, and smiling doesn't hurt either. And this girl, this girl that actually literally, I mean, you could put me on a polygraph. This girl was in my dreams. I mean, how, how few dreams you think of that we remember, okay? Take that into account. But a person in your dreams, I mean, to brush up against me, and I don't know, you know, clothes or not. I really, to be quite honest, I, maybe I had my shirt off. Maybe she had her shirt off. But she, she came up behind me. We were in close quarters here in my humble abode. I was standing right over there. And she was walking over, and she brushed up against me. And I quivered. And, and it was electric, and it was so beautiful. But it's the truth. I'm not just making that up to be a cute little story to try to to woo this girl. But <sighs> so I can't help but feel like it was meant to be. That God said, you know something, I'm gonna have mercy on this poor bastard, me. And um, you know, he sees what I've been going through. I mean, Jeez, you know, I can't believe at this, at my age, I could be so virile still. And so it's been a real battle with my sexuality. And uh, I mean, I, sometimes I, I think back in recent months and years, and I think, God, I, I wasn't, I wasn't that Randy even as a teenager in my 20s or 30s or 40s. It's like, what in the heck, you know? So, but something's taken over and I'm um, like I am um, like there's been a spell put on me that I wanted put on me like God is disciplining me and it's for my own good and I'm I'm growing as a human being and it feels really good and uh, this past week I kind of got off the Alex Jones show too that's another thing I'm thinking might be affecting me psychologically but you know I do want to uh, address that right now while I'm thinking about it but uh, you know, I am not one to abandon a friend, and he, to me, is like a brother from another mother. And I want to make it clear I'm not abandoning the man, but I cannot condone his defense of crony capitalism. I can't. And I can't condone his lack of empathy for the downtrodden. And... And I, I, I don't know how he can reconcile that in his mind with his Christian Christianity. And he says he supports Martin Luther King Jr., but opposed to a basic universal income as just an extension of Social Security. I mean, if it's unnecessary that anybody be born into fear, financial fear, then why should we have that status? Why should we maintain it? It's the slave uh, plantation owner mentality, I call it. Because Martin Luther King, this was one of his premier precepts and ideas for solving a lot of the crime and the lack of social, political, and economic cohesion in America at that time. So this war on poverty was really a smart move in terms of setting the captives free. It was a very biblical, very Christian thing to do. So see, I don't get that. I don't see how he can... So, you know, what I'm worried about is that knowing the intellectual prowess of Alex Jones, I am taken aback. I'm, I, I'm off balance. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, I, I, is he really just, is he truly, really, truly, genuinely dumb as a box of rocks on this issue? Or is he being intellectually dishonest? It'd be fine if he was just lying, but I can't, I wouldn't listen to a liar. I wouldn't support a liar. I wouldn't condone a liar. I wouldn't tell anybody else to listen to a liar. So is it intellectual dishonesty? Is he himself deceived? And so that's what's happening here. Is it half-truth? Because what really doesn't he understand about the pernicious nature of crony capitalism and how we need to reverse this trend? And that what, is, what doesn't he understand about how bad it is to have our currency debased through an ever-rising cost-of-living tax inflation? What doesn't he understand? How that's immoral and wrong. And it's antithetical that all that is capitalistic, all that is American, all that is constitutional, all that is Christian, it's evil. And it induces poverty in the land and desperation unnecessarily. If people are willing to do the jobs, if the jobs are getting done, then why would you marginalize, suppress, oppress, subjugate anybody? Okay, it's unwarranted. 
And what is the purpose for the Labor Department? Do you understand? What is the purpose for it? Is it not to, to dissuade unscrupulous employers from taking advantage of their workers so that the workers had some legal basis for getting an ethical, fair, moral pay for their, for their labors, for their work? You know, and something to keep their, their, uh, their psyches intact, to, to have hope of getting ahead, to enter, a, you know, a middle class... Why? I mean, you see, if if the jobs that require great education, if we've got plenty of prospects there, a huge pool of prospects that are educated, and the educated people can't get jobs. I mean, hell, I remember down in Vegas. I lived there from 2002, 2003, and uh, you remember the phone books. We still had phone books back then, but it was an inch thick with lawyers. I mean, it'd be like winning the lottery. You know, and how do, how do they get, you know, 600000 I don't know what they're getting these days. A couple thousand bucks an hour? So you got all these highly educated people with all these skills. So, I mean, how do people reconcile these things in their minds? And how do they not, you know, point out, why am I the only guy out flapping in the wind out there pointing out, look, the Labor Department's been utterly remiss giving commensurate, even close to commensurate, cost of living adjustments over decades. Just gradually, incrementally, like a frog in the pot of water, you turn the heat up slow and it's lulled to sleep and it doesn't hop out of the pot. And that's what's happened here. Over decades they've done this, since they assassinated JFK. It's all part and parcel with this scheme. I mean, if there was checks and balances, even from the Labor Department, and employers would complain, they'd say, what do you mean i got to raise my... Uh, minimum, I got to pay my workers more. And they're right to say that. Good. That's, they should say that. I, I was hoping to give them a reduction. Why, why is there, you know, so the Labor Department said, well, their cost of living went up. And the employer would say, well, why did it go up? Let's get to the bottom of this. Have the discussion. Let's have discourse. Let's resolve this problem. Talk to me. Was there a disruption in the supply chain? Is that what caused the problem? Okay, well, no, it, it's just that shareholders, investors, stockholders, they bought the company and now they're, they're saying they want more for it. They're, they're, they're come out, they own it all. They're controlling it. Isn't that capitalism? You understand? So they say, okay, you want to play that way? Then, uh, okay, let, let, let's get crazy here. So the Labor Department could say, okay, well, yeah, we're going to give not only that, but we're going to give a little more because they need to have hope that supply and demand capitalism is working, that the free market is working, and that they're going to be able to get ahead to be prosperous, to be financially what? Free. To buy, be financially what? Out of fear secure do you understand everybody needs that if it keeps going decade after decade, how do we keep it together psychologically and your sense of insecurity of fear just grows year after year your burden right keeps going up through this thing we call uh, you euphemistically a cost of living is a tax i mean if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck hey what the hell it's a duck so that's what it is. If you got to pay it to live, the cost of living, dissect the word, of continuing to exist, the right, apparently, to continue to exist according to the people that enforce these rules, then you, you, this is it. This is what you got to pay if you want to keep existing. And that keeps going up and it gets harder and harder and harder. They keep raising the bar year after year, decade after decade. They keep making the nut harder and harder. to. How do you think that's going to play on the population psychologically? I mean, I know damn well if I wanted to be worth billions, right? No problem. I'm a smart guy. Anything I've ever put my mind to, I can learn. Boom, hands down. I mean, I know when I took my real estate exam in 2006, I never, they wouldn't even tell me the results. But I'm almost absolutely certain because I knew it all by rote memory. I just, I was taking ginkgo biloba. I was drinking wine my blood was nice and clean my brain was working good and I mean I learned it I could practically recite the, the answers of my sleep so when I took that exam I in all likelihood I got 100 percent I mean I, I, the teachers themselves they probably thought well you know well, is he right or wrong on this one okay it's a toss-up so could have gone either way so but I'm pretty sure